Okay, as promised, I'm going to show you how to uh, apply the starter strip. This is here's the double sided tape. This is what I'm using. I got it at Walmart for like $2.50. I'm not sure if there's enough there to do all three pieces, but it's a start. Um, this is the starter tape, double sided tape. And what you want to do is line that up where when you roll it down, it will line up with the edge of the fabric just right like that yeah I'm on the floor because my dining room table isn't big enough anyway we're gonna pull this off and then you roll it Yes, I have a dog. She's a brat. I rub that tape down good. <laughs> you want to roll the fabric up on the pole. Move this out the way. Oh, by the way, you want to find the center of your fabric and the center of your post. I mean your um roller and line them up. So the closest they can be to the center and I did not go all the way to the end because I want to have room to stretch my fabric whenever I roll it up so as you roll it up you want to push out all the wrinkles making sure you don't have any wrinkles in your roller and what you're going to do is when you go to connect your quilt you're going to stretch your quilt out and like if this is for the completed quilt you're going to take all three layers you're going to take the top the bottom and the batting as they're layered and you're going to pin them to this keeping starting in the middle working your way from one side to the other keeping it taut and keeping it straight and then as you go you're going to roll it up on the roller as you sew it and you'll see it in a little bit how to use the roller the whole frame you sew the area roll it sew it roll it sew it so and uh, you're going to do this with um the top and the bottom you won't do this with the, the batting basically you'll roll the batting up and it'll sit on top of the other two rollers that'll be down here and um as you roll it it'll unroll and the other two rollers will do the same way with the top and the bottom so that they'll be you can unroll them as you roll this one up as you sew so let me finish well I just roll it up like this here I've got a few wrinkles in it I'll rub them out and that's all you do is just roll it up like that and you do the same thing when you pin your quilt to it you just roll the quilt up in it only it'll be on the frame and that way you can keep your quilt tight and uh, keep all the wrinkles out of it keep it even and straight okay I'll do this one more time can't really tell a smudge dip that's my center mark that's my center mark I'm just gonna pull the backing off the tape roll this onto it and then roll it up now as far as this goes this is just I think an old bed sheet that I had around the house and I cut it 12 inches from top to bottom and the length that I wanted it to be for the quilts that I'll make it doesn't have to be a sheet you can buy a muslin uh, I would suggest something thin uh, to go here just so you know you could pin your quilt to it and roll it up on it the top and the bottom and the uh, finished product uh, so that's just to give you a heads up what I'm doing next this is the second one and I'm fixing to do it and then I'll do the third one and then I'll put the frame together and uh, show you what it looks like put together and then I'll show you how to pin the quilt to it talk to you in a minute okay this is the third one the one I pieced in the middle after this I would say to you don't use uh, a piece together roll because you'll end up with a lump here in the middle that will cause this this probably will work fine for 
um, my starter fabric, you know, that I roll off of, but I don't think I would use this for my finished work. Um, since I have this screwed together, I might go pick up another piece. It's like five dollars. This is one inch PVC, it comes in 10 foot sticks. So, just a little heads up on this. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> I have put this thing together and I've got it on the sewing machine as you can see. In order to get it under the sewing machine neck down there, you have to leave the end off of it so that you can get the fabric underneath the edge of the sewing machine. Now these are the tensioning strips what I was telling you about. You want to pin that to your quilt, go through all three layers, and it will run along here, go through here, come back out, and you pull it tight and pin it together to keep the whole quilt tight. And you do that on both sides. See, you do that on both sides. <clears throat> the way I've got this set up, this is my quilt start here. I've already sewed the end of this together. You don't have to. You can pin it, uh, pin all three layers together on, onto the starter strip there. I've rolled up my batting onto my other rolls, like so. And this is the, actually, this is the top, and that's the bottom. But I wanted to sew from. This this top this uh, because of the squares I'm going to cut sew along these lines with purple thread to the purple thread so that uh, you don't see it like you do these yellow this yellow stuff here. Also have invisible thread. I'm going to try that out in a little while. See how that works out. But this is how you set it up. I'm not probably not gonna. I'm going to use this sewing machine. I just got this sewing machine. I paid twenty dollars for it from somebody, and they had left it sitting in the garage, and that thing was rusted. It wouldn't even move. It was so rusted. So I took it apart. From here, here, over here, down there, under there. This, the bobbin was so rusted it wouldn't even turn. Cleaned it out, oiled it up, <clears throat> got it working. Uh, I don't know how in the hell to use these things here. So I'm going to have to read the manual on it. It came with the manual, believe it or not. It had the original manual. Because it's from the... 50s or the 60s, I don't know which one, maybe the 70s. But uh, you, this is actually the wrong press for foot right here. So you can see that. You're supposed to have a uh, free mode press for foot so that it'll sew and you can move it around. Now, here uh, I, I've got two three inch pieces of PVC here. If you, uh, as you see, it'll move back and forth on that. And that's that's the deal, because as, as you can see, the frame sits on those. And what you want to do is you just want to hold on to the the frame, and you can just move it back and forth and up and down, sliding it on there like that. And so, <clears throat> and you can sew from one side to the other. And I've only got about five or six inches of. Uh, sewing room here but I've only got so much throat to sew anyway by the time I get to the back of the sewing machine here a few times uh, this here will get smaller and smaller so this will get bigger and bigger so this here will be pressing against that in time you can make this part right here bigger to accommodate that like I said before you can change it where your rollers go over the top of each other. As long as you've got this area here, you know, you can also make one that will accommodate your, your batting. And, uh, but, you know, as long as you've got the room to work here. If you have a larger sewing machine or you just want more space here, you can increase the distance here. Uh, 
But I just I just went with this size here. It's uh, the end pieces are 16 inches long. That's long enough for me. Some people might think, well, why don't you do it two foot and 24 inches and all that? And I'm just like, you know, I, I don't have that much space to work with in here until I get my den straightened out where I can use it as a sewing room and other things. I have to do it in the dining room. And as you can see, I've got plenty of projects and plants going right now. So I don't have much room. <laughs> uh, so, but this is how you set it up. Like I said, you have to leave one end off so you can slide your quilt underneath there. And then you want to add your ends. Put your caps on. Once you have your fabric tight, tighten up your cap. Uh, that's what these slots are for so that you can run a piece of strap through this is a, a heavy-duty fabric that uh, is kind of almost like canvas that I'm using you can probably use cotton although it'll give a little bit so the thicker the fabric the better it will keep your your quilt tight but you just pin it here run it through here and you can pull it tight like that and as you can see I've got plenty of room between the quilt and the frame so I can make up to a six foot <coughs> a six foot blanket if I want to um, but uh, that's what I got going on right now and that's uh, that's how you set up the uh, the quilting frame like I said this is three inch PVC you could probably use it works perfect for my sewing machine. Your sewing machine, you might need three and a half, four. Hell, you might get away with uh, two and a half. But you just set the frame on that so that you can it'll roll it back and forth. And it'll allow you to slide your quilt back and forth. Those are actually 24 inches long, I think. <clears throat> might be 20 inches long. But uh, I've cut the end off, sanded it. And heated it up to smooth it out so that it doesn't catch on my fabric. But uh, I've got a little bit of a cold and a toothache today, so excuse me if I sound uh, stuffy. But I just wanted to show you how how I put it together and how it fits under the sewing machine and how you would use it. It just so uh, and like I said, I have the wrong presser foot, so I have to get a, a different presser foot. I'm going to Michael's this afternoon to see if I can find one. Uh, believe it or not, you go to some place like Joanne's Fabrics, they do not have sewing machine items. They want the quick sale stuff. So, if you're looking for presser foot, you're probably going to have to order them offline or find a specialty sewing shop. And I don't know if Michael's is even going to have it, but you're supposed to have a free hand, free motion, or whatever they call it, uh, foot on there where you can see because you do that and it just bites and you don't want it to do that. You want to be able to move around freely. <clears throat> and uh and so you know you want it to move like that but you want it to keep uh keep the tension on the sewing machine and uh i've got to get one of those before i can actually do anything with the quilt but i wanted to show you how how it gets put together and um and uh used with the sewing machine and i don't recall showing these so now you know how that part works and these if you have the room can be further apart uh, when you get close to the edge pretty much it doesn't really matter when the edge of the frame gets closer to the sewing machine um, you know in my case I don't really I won't really get that close but the, the, the far end weight down here will balance it out as well so some people use one you know, I could have put the quilt at one end and just used one down here to carry the quilt down. You know, just have it underneath the heavy end and the closer I got to move it down here, you know. <clears throat> but, uh, I just wanted to show you how to set this frame up. And I hope this helps somebody because I know these things sell online anywhere from 100 to $200 depending on who you buy it from and where you get it, you know. Uh, the style of frame 
come from a guy, uh, I think his name is John Flynn. Um, I think he designed it. Only difference is on his ends here, he has a nut to tighten up. And right here, he has a, uh, he has knurls in the frame and on the end of the pipe. And the pipes are fiberglass. Uh, he does sell a kit where you just get the ends and you buy the pipe yourself. You can use metal, you can use PVC, you can use fiberglass. And I'm sure fiberglass would be better than PVC because these have some give. As you can see, it moves a little bit when you squeeze in on it. If you get it too tight, it will bow. So fiberglass would probably be better. But with anything, the larger it is, the easier it'll bend anyway. If this was four foot, it probably wouldn't bend as much so keeping that in mind this cost me twenty dollars in PVC a couple of screws I had laying around the acrylic sheet I had laying around and you can see that's about three eighths of an inch you could get away with a quarter inch piece of plywood you know uh, anything you have laying around the house will probably work as long as it's clean because you don't want your fabric getting dirty like I said, this is an, uh, I don't know if this is an old sheet or what, but the piece of fabric I had laying around, I just cut 12 inch strips off of it and used double sided tape, which I got from Walmart for $2.48, I think, less than $3. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I got, I got less than 30 bucks into it and including sewing machine, less than 50 bucks. <laughs> so. <clears throat> so yeah you can do this save yourself some money build one for your grandma build one for your mama uh, if they do quilting and uh, enjoy and I hope everybody got something out of this whether it was for sewing purposes quilting purposes or just a project you wanted to do uh, everybody have a good day